Hey, Joe. Hey, Mr. Cruz, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. You got your Chargers hat on there. Oh, yeah, I had to represent, <laughs> man. Like like every year, this is the year, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, hey, man, I, I just first of all wanted to thank you. I've, I've interviewed many times on the red carpet uh, with your wife uh, on junkets, and you've just been the most gracious guy in the world, and I just want to thank you for that. Oh, thank you, man. I'm, I, I'm also the most grateful guy, man, to be, to be yes. in business as long as I have. I'm still here. I can't believe it. Yep, it's it's amazing. So first of all, what was the what was the big draw about Rumble, the character, the wrestling centric story, or a, a sports story that always tells you something more than just athletics? Well, you know, one thing that people don't may not know is that my first job in entertainment was an American Gladiator style show called Battle Dome, where I basically what had a wrestler style personality i was called t money in fact my wife still calls me t money to this day <laughs> and i was this gangster from detroit and i had a posse and we would take on contestants in this game show and it was like wheel of fortune but there was like wheel of death <laughs> they would put us in a cage set the ends on fire rotate the cage and whoever was left standing at the end of a time period was the winner. It, it was as violent and crazy and, as, as it sounds. And first of all, we sent so many people to the hospital. The show <laughs> only lasted two years because it got canceled because we got sued too much. It was too many lawsuits. Um, but it reminded me of what Rumble is. Uh -huh. you know, it took me back to that whole thing about these wrestlers fighting on behalf of their cities and the whole thing. And each of them having different personalities. Now I was the gang member, gangster from Detroit, but we had like a Malibu Ken and then we had a military guy and then we had a head banging rocker guy, you know? So we all had people that represented different things, but you know, it reminded me of that. And I said, man, this is what this is. Wrestling has always been that style entertainment. You know what I mean? Where, yeah. It's really, really big. And first of all, don't say people, people all act like to act like it's not real. Hey, man, I promise you, when they, when they get in there, it's real. Yeah. Like, whatever it, it parts are scripted, but man, when it when you get in there and you're taking those punches and you're taking those hits and you're hitting that floor, it's no joke. I mean, it's life or death in a lot of ways. Yeah, that was one of the things I like most about the uh, the David Arquette uh, documentary that came out oh, last year. Last year, yes. I think it was. Yes. And, and how, like, you know, you think, okay, it's staged, it's orchestrated, it's choreographed. I mean, yeah, maybe it's choreographed, but you're still getting hit. Oh, it's it's brutal, man. It's brutal. You're talking about bleeding and fight and just injuries that last for days. I mean, you're giving it up, but but it's for the entertainment. It's yeah. for that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it is, a, it's truly a sport. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. thing. A lot of people don't feel like it, but it's a, it's one of the most amazing sports of all time. That's why I really like that documentary about David. Cause it really, it was a love letter to wrestling. I thought yeah. more than anything, more than about his career or anything, but uh, you know, you, you've been a part of a lot of, of amazing projects. Um, what did it mean to you to be a part of this voice cast? I mean, this is a pretty cool cast. Oh, it's really cool. I mean, you talk, Will Arnett, we did the, uh, I was had the pleasure of working with him on the Netflix version of Arrested Development. Uh, and, you know, Roman Reigns is also in it. Stephen A is a good friend of mine, yeah. uh, you know, for ESPN. He's a, actually a brilliant actor. I mean, people do not know how great an actor Stephen A is. And I'm here to tell you, he's amazing. Uh, but it's, it's just, you know, one of these things is that, you know, Tony Danza, a guy that, you know, I grew up watching on Who's the Boss, you know what I mean? Yeah. One thing I love about voice acting is that it does give you a chance to work with people that you've always admired, but also during the pandemic, it was super, super hard. And I'm thankful we were able to do it because there were times I was in my closet doing, doing lines so that they could animate on them, knowing that these lines weren't, weren't going to make the movie because it was in my closet, <laughs> you know? Um, so we, there was a time where we didn't even know when we'd be able to do this thing. And 
the fact that it's coming out this week, uh, December 15th, is blowing my mind, man. Every You got to yeah. understand, every film is a miracle. Every yeah. last one of them. Yeah, well, they say it takes a village, but it really takes a village to 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 make a movie. Um, right. You know, I'm always fascinated by you. You wear many hats, a uh, host, actor. Um, you know, it, it, when you were starting out, was it kind of like a grenade theory? And, and do you still abide by that, where you just throw it all out there and see what sticks? Yes, yes. First of all, um, the, the great thing about my career is that I came from football. Uh, I didn't come from Juilliard or, you know, USC, act, some acting school or some training, because what happens is a lot of these actors have teachers that are back there judging them and saying, mm, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. I never had that. I could do it all. And yeah. it didn't really matter. They were like, you can't, you, you shouldn't do a reality show. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't do commercials. I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you shouldn't be hosting. I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what was happening is as I got the opportunity, I learned to say yes because I needed to learn new skills. And every time I did it, I got better at it. And to get this chance to do voice acting in a major film, it just makes you better at all of it. And you just you start to learn a lot, but you only learn by doing. Right. And so I love the fact that my career is, is as diverse as it is. And I'm still just getting started, man. I really yeah. this this business is changing a lot. It's changing by the day. Yeah, it is. Well, Terry, thank you so very, very, very much. Uh, always a pleasure to see you. All the best, my man. And uh, good luck with Brumball. You got it, Joel. Thank you so much, my man. See you on the carpet. All right. Look forward to it, brother. Take care. All righty. Bye.